Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Tuesday, August 20th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down this slate of games. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome. It helps out the algorithm, guys. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. So we got a bunch of night games to get into here, guys. 705 Eastern, New York Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Hosting the Cleveland Guardians, a battle of first place teams here, AL Central, AL East, is the Yankees neck and neck with the Orioles. Luis Gill going for the Bronx Bombers, Matt Boyd going for Cleveland, eight in the hook being the total, minus 160, that's the Bronx Bombers as the home favorite. Luis Gill on the hill, his last time out actually, not a great start against the Chicago White Sox. Not sure if he was, you know, mind mindset thing, you know, going up against the White Sox, just going to cruise through. It really didn't go that way. Otherwise, he's been he's been terrific. He really has. 3.2 ERA, 141 strikeouts. I think he bounces back here. He's up against Matt Boyd, the lefty for Cleveland. It's only his second start of the year. His first was great. Five and a third innings against the Chicago Cubs. Three hits, one earned run given up. Six to zero strikeout to walk ratio. He's a guy that's had a great career. So now it being his second start with the first one being good, I don't see any reason why you know, not to expect good things for Matt Boyd down the stretch of this season. The thing with Cleveland, though, they just lost three straight at Milwaukee. Both teams coming in off of an off day. And Cleveland only scored four runs in that series. And actually, the Yankees only scored five runs in their prior series as well. So both of these offenses, not exactly, you know, putting up the production that you'd like. And it kind of leads me into Cleveland here, guys. You go over the last two weeks. This is the coldest lineup in baseball by weighted runs created plus team OPS. They're near the bottom. I mean, a lot of people, you know, recognize batting average. So just to put that out there, 207 team batting average the last 14 days. I'm not looking to bet on Cleveland. They've actually struggled against righties, bottom 10 in MLB. And the Yankees bringing up handedness of pitcher facing, you know, they're the number one hitting lineup against righties in all of baseball. But against Southpaws, they're really just middle of the pack here. Add in the fact Cleveland, the second best bullpen in baseball by my numbers. Actually, I know it's a hitter's ballpark, but asking these two teams to get to nine runs, I think it's too tall of a task here, guys. I think both starters have decent starts, have good starts, and I I think this stays under eight in the hook. It's reduced juice as well, so we'll start it off. Cleveland and New York under eight and a half in Yankee Stadium. Next one up five minutes later. City Field. We're going from Yankee Stadium to City Field. Usually it's not like that. I don't know any New York fans out there. Do they usually schedule the Mets and the Yankees both at home? Uh, I didn't think so, but we get it here on Tuesday night. It's the Baltimore Orioles, New York Mets. Jose Quintana, the lefty going for the Metropolitans. Dean Kremer going for the O's. Orioles, of course, you know, neck and neck with the Yankees there in the AL East. What, 21 games over 500. Eight and a half being the total in this one. Mets minus 120 as the home favorite. Mets coming in a few games over 500. They got Quintana on the hill. If you've been watching the show, he's a guy we've actually been betting on for a lot of the season. But actually of recent, he hasn't been that great. The 34-year-old Colombian, 10 walks in his last 14 innings pitch. So he's having some control issues. And he had a real rough outing last time against the Oakland A's. And I don't even think it shows in the box score. Because when you, you when you watch the game, he loaded the bases twice and ended up getting out of it before giving up a grand slam. So he was actually, you know, kind of fortunate there not to, not to even have more crooked numbers put up there. But he's got four plus walks and three of his last five times out. I think he's going to struggle against the Orioles offense and Dean Kremer, the uh, 28 year old out of UNLV, the former running rebel. He's really been up and down this season. I mean, a four or five ERA, but you know, you look at some of his starts, he, he's kind of struggled a bit. Both of these two teams trending over for the season, the Orioles crush lefties, the Mets. I, I like their lineup overall. So eight and a half here, guys, we just broke down the first game in Yankee stadium. We're getting that same number here. I could see both starters struggling and both lineups putting up some crooked numbers. So we'll start it off with an under in the Yankees game. We'll go over in the Mets game to start us off here on the Tuesday slate. Heading to Arlington up next, 8 o'clock Eastern hour, Pittsburgh Pirates, Texas Rangers. Mitch Keller on the hill for the Pirates. Cody Bradford, the lefty going for the Rangers. Minus 135, that's Texas is the home favorite. Total of eight. 
Pittsburgh had that long losing streak, not playing really great baseball. Now they got Mitch Keller on the hill, eight earned runs, two starts ago, seven earned runs last time out. Back-to-back -back starts, he has been awful. Velocity is down. I wouldn't be surprised if, if we get kind of like a, a change of pitchers here, guys. A lot of times when guys are that bad and the velocity shrinks, that could be an injury of some sort. But either way, we're going to use it in our handicap, look to go against them. Need to add on the fact the Rangers starter, Cody Bradford, this guy has been stellar. He's 4-0 record-wise, back-to-back starts against the Twins and the Yankees. He's been, he, he's been great. Looking to bet on him, have it in my notes. It's just the thing is the Rangers, they're not really a bet on team right now. So this isn't going to be like best bet material or anything like that, guys. But listing Cody Bradford as the starter, I think he's going to have a good start here. So we'll lay the 35 cents with the Rangers over the Pirates. Minnesota Twins, San Diego Padres. We head out to the West Coast up next. Bailey Ober going for the Twins. Martin Perez, the lefty going for the Friars. Seven in the hook being the total minus 119 in the overnight market right now. That's the Twins as the road favorite. Both these two teams have their eyes on playoff spots in the AL and the NL, respectfully. Twins, what, 16 games over 500. The Padres now 15 games over 500. Just a couple games back from the LA Dodgers. Good season overall, what, plus nine units year to date. They've really been on a good run, and they got Perez on the hill. 33-year-old from Venezuela, came over in the trade, and really since being traded, uh, the Padres read a great article that they kind of changed his, his pitch arsenal, wanting him to throw more pitches that are his better pitchers, pitches, which makes sense. Surprised it didn't happen beforehand, but it, it's translated to him since July 20th. He has a 1.4 ERA. He's been great in all three starts with the Padres. Um, they do have a game back from Colorado already under their belt. You know, the Monday night game, which we did break down on yesterday's show. So I think the bat's a little bit more used to going from the thin air to sea level. Uh, that, that's always a plus in terms of like the scheduling. In the Twins, their starter, Bailey Over, 29-year-old from College of Charleston. Two earned runs or less and five straight starts. He has been really good. You can see it in this number. I mean, he's, he's having to lay 20 cents against one of the better teams in the National League and the Padres. But when you break it down a little bit more in those in some of his more recent starts, it's the White Sox, it's the Tigers, it's the Texas Rangers who have really been slumping. So I think he's actually taken a step up in class here against the Padres lineup, which is top three against righties across all of MLB. Last two weeks, they're the number two hottest lineup by weighted runs created plus. I really don't want to go against the Padres with Martin Perez on the hill. So catching a plus price here with him, we'll jump on the home dog barking in Petco. It's Martin Perez as the listed starter, and it's the Padres plus 109. Got one game left here, guys. Going to be breaking it down. A reminder, if you could comment below, uh, it helps out the algorithm. Anything is welcome. Your MLB picks. Any questions, fire away. We'll do a question and answer uh, right now with some of the uh, comments from prior shows, which I really appreciate you guys firing away and to your MLB picks more than welcome. So we got Chris Fisher from three days ago. Appreciate the, the comment, Chris. Um, he's talking about being all over the Padres and he's bringing up the fact back when they played against Colorado, Cal Quantrill was starting for Colorado and he's been hitting 80% on the run line when he starts at home. So taking the Colorado Rockies plus one and a half at home with Quantrill on the hill. Just something to keep in mind. Maybe that doesn't mean much if he isn't 100% healthy, but I needed to share this info in case you had any feedback. So it's speaking to, I guess your question is, and I appreciate it, Chris, um, you know, betting on pitchers with good pass performance at home. Absolutely. I think home road splits matter. I think lefty righty splits matter. And Chris, even more so with Colorado, you know, I'd probably talk the Rockies, if not the most of any team, definitely the most of any team that's sub 500 this year on, on the show. And the reason being is because I think us as sports bettors can get even more of an advantage with that thin air you know, 5,000 feet up in the air and then going to coastal. I think the scheduling matters more with the Rockies. So that's why I bring it up. And absolutely how these guys pitch in the ballpark, it matters a lot. So uh, thanks for the question there, Chris. Got another one here from Cap Sports. 
a little bit of a troll. We'll give some trolls some love too. Uh, two days ago, he wrote, really taking Padres because Kyle Freeland has a blister? Dude, you really have no clue. You're betting big names and passing on smaller names. That's all you're doing. That's whack. Well, Cap Sports, I can tell you really haven't been watching the show much because I can remember some comments from, you know, a couple months ago of guys saying, hey, you're all you're doing is taking big underdogs. So now if you're kind of coming at me with all I'm doing is taking the big name starting pitchers, which I'm absolutely not. I mean, if you've been watching the show, if anything, I lean way too much towards underdogs. But no, I actually look to go against big name pitchers when possible. So when the numbers line up, um, yeah, man, I just don't think your your comment has any merit to it. But anyway, hey, keep trolling away and it helps out the algorithm. So thanks, man. All right, one more here before we get to the last game, guys. Dustin Andrews commenting a week ago. Good morning, Drew. Do you find it helpful to use power number system to handicap your pitcher hitter matchups? I use StatHead to handicap my games. Do you consider that to be a good resource? And if not, which one would you recommend? Thank you, Drew. I really appreciate the expert insights and opinions. God bless. Well, thank you, Dustin. And uh, God bless you as well. May God bless our picks. Hopefully a couple of uh, winners here. But um, yes, I have used StatHead. Baseball Reference, I believe, is kind of connected in some form or fashion with them. And yeah, for uh, how pitchers have performed in certain ballparks, I go back and use that the website you brought up for that exact kind of matchup handicap. I also use fan fan graphs a lot um, just for for kind of prior matchups, game logs. It just kind of comes on the screen easy for me because I'm a big, you know, handicapper in terms of what have you done for me recently, like last three games, last five games. And it just sets up well there on fan graphs. But yes, I do use baseball reference for more like past years, how uh, guys have hit and and pitched in certain certain spots. So um, yeah, I think that also team rankings for like trends. I like that one. That's more like team specific instead of player specific. But I would throw those three out there. And thanks for the question, uh, Dustin. And, and guys, feel free to uh, chime in below in the comments below. Any questions, more than welcome. So we got last game here, guys. Seattle and L.A. Last game on the card. West Coast special for you. Number two team in the AL West. Versus the top team in the NL West, Walker Bueller on the hill for the Dodgers, Bobby Miller going for the M's. Eight and a half being the total, Dodgers minus 150 home favorites. Bobby Miller, first rounder out of Louisville, he has been rocked. 18 hits, 13 earned runs in his last eight innings, eight earned run average year to date. So he's a guy I just can't be betting on. Plus the fact, speaking of home road splits, He's got huge dichotomy here. And on the road, he's been terrible. Over an 11 ERA on the road. He's going into Dodger Stadium here, which the Dodgers are a little bit banged up. They really are, guys. So laying minus 150, I'd pump the brakes a little bit on it. But, hey, it's last game on the card. If, you, if you're looking for kind of a degenerate special, tough to call a Dodgers game a degenerate special. But uh, maybe the get-back game, if you will. Hopefully, we don't need a get-back game. But either way, Walker Bueller. 30 years old out of Vanderbilt, 5.6 ERA. But when you kind of dig into it a little bit more, outside of the Coors Field pitching in Colorado, which he got blown up, he's actually only given up thir three earned runs or less in the eight starts otherwise. So he's been decent outside of that Coors Field start. Look, guys, the minus 150 I don't love, but it's the much better lineup with the Dodgers. They've been way better against righties. Although they are a little bit banged up, if you need something, I would list Walker Bueller and lay the 50 cents with the Dodgers over the Mariners, who have had struggle, who have really struggled scoring runs. They've lost, what, five of six coming into this series. But in recap, we'll go on the best bet. Martin Perez, plus 109, the Padres over the Twins. We got the Rangers, minus 135 over the Pirates. We get the Orioles and the Mets up and over eight and a half. And we get Cleveland and New York. That's the Yankees. Luis Gill and Matt Boyd, both listed as the starter in this handicap. Eight and a hook being the total. We are betting it under. I am Drew Barton. That does it for Drew's Daily Diamond. If you could comment below, smash that like button. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, cash those tickets.